Alright, Shalom, all praises to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Racha, Kodash, double honor to the apostles and elders of great millstone, who are well, and labor in the word and doctrine. Now, recently, in a couple of videos, I've said, you know, in reference to the so called red pill community, that them, they're really, they're just using re remixed scriptures, you know, and scriptural talking points. Uh, the elder brother Yashua did a beautiful lesson on this, er, you know, earlier this week or earlier this month. I'm not too sure when it came out, but I caught it recently. But you know, going through certain scriptures, I won't make it long. It doesn't need to be long. But you know, a lot of people have glorify these men like they've been on some, like they came up with this shit. You know, the Lord invented the scriptures. You know, the word came for the Lord. Greater the company of them that published it, paraphrasing. But these men get put on a level, like these niggas invented this shit. They didn't invent this shit. And now it's a cool thing. You know, now everyone's, this is a, not socially acceptable fully, but there's a, a niche pocket that be, of people that get down with this. But the apostles are pushing this, pushing this truth specifically, you know, going into, going into prophecy mainly. But they were going in and they were exposing the nature of the woman and they were going into all this but you've got man you know when a rich man speak you know andrew tate this guy that guy which you know he said some shit that's on point cool but is he holistically a righteous person no he's not and now he's joined it onto a religion of idolatry so there you are you know but then man rich up in up in this society up in this world but when the poor man speak, you know, everyone tries to overthrow him. If you stumble with his words, you know, they try to dash, dash him away, paraphrasing as the scripture says. You know, so, we, really we need to give double honors to our apostles, especially on this topic. You know, not glorifying these, you know, fresh and fit and this. Yeah, cool, it's cool, it's cool. But, you know, the scriptures came from the Lord and who taught us this doctrine of the Lord, you understand? So we're in the Syrac, all that being said, fucking hell, rambling. Now let's get into it. The Syrac or Ecclesiasticus chapter 25. And I'm just gonna skip around in here because this is one of them. Right, 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 right. Verse 13 says, give me any plague, but the plague of the heart, the heart, mind, you know, we know what that is. Give me any plague, but the plague of the, of the heart, slash mind, and any wickedness, but the wickedness of a woman. <laughs> the answer to that, yeah, is verse 19. It says, All wickedness is but little to the wickedness of a woman. Let the portion of a sinner fall upon her. You know, and it speaks about uh, such is the way of an adulterous woman. She wipeth her mouth and saith, I have done no evil. And this society emboldens that, it emboldens adultery, it embolden, emboldens rebellion against the biblical order, you know, biblical marriage. It's completely contrary. Right, verse 16, it says, I'd rather what I'd excuse me, I'd rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than to keep house with a wicked woman. Verse 17, the wickedness of a woman changeth her face and darkeneth her countenance with like sackcloth. And you can see that, that. <laughs> chill out. Right, verse 21, it says, Stumble not the beauty of a woman and desire her not for pleasure. Right, so that, that basically, you know, that, it speaks about um giving giving all your resources to a harlot it speaks about that to a thigh you know and the great majority of these women would be biblically identified as whores you know whether it's acceptable or not the biblical the order from the lord you know that's what a lot would be identified as 22 says a woman if she maintain her husband is full of anger impudence and much reproach you know, and these are, these are the talking points of them man fresh and fit and this and that. You know, if a, if a woman is providing and protecting her husband, she's going to look at him like a fucking, a you, a boy. You know, a, a liability rather than an asset. You know, and a man is meant to be a woman's security and pro protection and provision. You know, in the ancient world, that's how it went. The idea of giving away in marriage is the father giving away the of duty responsibility but the authority from the father to the man. That's as simple as it is. 
speaks in the law about a reference this in another video a woman can make a vow let's see if I can search this I think it's in numbers 30 if this doesn't come up there it is there it is there it is right numbers 30 and 1 it says a that's why it says um man are subject sorry women are subject to men as also saith the law now paraphrasing Anyway, Numbers 13, what it said, And Moses spake unto the heads of the tribes concerning the children of Israel, saying, This is the thing which Yahweh hath commanded. All right, so this is th these are not just some random man that have you know, built themselves up according to ease, you know, metrics of success, so on and so forth. This is what the Lord ordained. All right, this is the, a command from the Lord. So th let's put this shit in perspective. Verse 2 says, If a man vow vow unto Yahweh, or swear an oath to bind his soul with a bond, he should not break his word, he should do according to all that proceedeth out of his mouth. Right, so a man should keep his word. A man should keep his word. Right, verse 3, it said, If a woman also vow a vow unto Yahweh, and bind herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth, and her father hear a vow, and a bond wherewith she hath bound her soul, and her father shall hold his peace at her, then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. But if her father disallow her in the day that he heareth, not any of her, her vows or her bonds wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand, and Yahweh shall forgive her, because her father disallowed her. Right, so what, and it says in her youth, you know, because, let's go into that word for youth. See, if this, is, if this isn't a red pill, the, tr the scriptures are the true red pill. The word for youth, youth, word for youth is an ayah. An ayah says youth, early life. It says youth, 46 times, childhood once. Now, you skip down verse 6. It says, and if she had at all an husband, when she vowed or uttered or out of her lips, wherewith she hath bound her soul, and her husband heard it, and held his peace at her in the day that he heard it. Then a vow shall stand, and the bonds wherewith she, hath bound, she bound her soul shall stand. But if her husband disallowed her on that day that he heard it, then he shall make her vow which she vowed, and that which she uttered with her lips, wherewith she bound her soul, of none effect, and Yahweh shall forgive her. Right, so obviously, that's the idea. A, hus a, a father and a husband... You know, that's that male authority figure. And that's what it means, giving away marriage. That's why a woman takes a man's name. It denotes property. You you come out your father's name to your husband's name. Right, let's get one more. Let's not get pressured by the phone call. Can wait, Lord willing. Right. Uh, Sarah 26. And yeah, it goes in on a, a virtuous one. There's, there's a, you know, there's a double-edged thing. The scripture double-edged sword, but you know it talks good on the good woman and it talks bad about a wicked woman. Same it does on the man. But if you want to talk about red pill, trust me. And this is just we're not we're just scraping the surface. <laughs> it's Sirach twenty six, uh, verse seven. An evil wife is a yoke shaken to and fro. He that hath hold of her is it as though he held a scorpion. <laughs> and no one's trying to hold a scorpion, but. Again, in this cooked out simp society, you know, a lot of men are trying to hold on to uh, an evil wife. What does it say? Now, you know, technically, when you go into it, it would be adultery. But guess what? If you slept with a woman that wasn't a virgin, that's adultery. According to, according to the law in your house, I magnified that law. Right. Um, Sirach 25 and 23. A wicked woman abateth the courage, maketh in heavy countenance and a wounded heart. A woman that will not comfort her husband in distress, maketh weak hands and feeble knees. You know, a wife is meant to be a pillar of rest. You know, but now they're encouraged to to, to be as a man. You know, you get home. No one's trying to hear that. We're just trying to chill out. You know, but that's not what's taught. That's not what's promoted. Verse 24. Of the woman came the beginning of sin and through her we all die. Right, Eve being deceived was in the transgression. It says, give the water no passage, neither a wicked woman liberty to gather abroad. You know, it's a thought in about living that sex in the city lifestyle. What? <laughs> you know, wanting to live that quote unquote single life, but even that's a that's a concept of this society because 
in the ancient world, your father won't be letting you do that. He better not be. No, that would be a shame unto him. Verse uh, 26 it says, "If she go, if she go as thou wouldest, if she go not, excuse me, if she go not as thou wouldest have her, cut her off from thy flesh and give her a bill of divorce and let her go, let her gone." You know, if she's not going to do it, she's not going to listen. She's going to be a complete demon. Let her go. That's in the the scriptures. Now, Yahweh Shai said, technically, if you put away a woman, uh, except for the cause of adultery, you know, you cause her to commit adultery. Because if, if she's going to take a man, then technically she's bound unto you according to the law until she's dead. Um. <laughs> so I read 26 and 8. A drunken woman in a gather abroad causeth great anger, and she will not cover her own shame. You know, so this <laughs> is flying out this place, that place. But what on earth are you doing? <laughs> you know, these are these are the talking points. They're, 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 the scriptures have the, the true perspective on it though. And that's the one thing them men are lacking. Um Yo, we'll end it on a on a so-called positive note. We'll end it on a nice note. So there is a good, <laughs> there's there's hope at the end of the tunnel. You get it, right? Sirach 26 and verse 14. A silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. You know, some <laughs> some women, you know, just learn to sometimes be quiet. You don't understand how much peace that may bring a man. Okay, a silent and loving woman is a gift of the Lord. Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai, and there's nothing so much worth as a mind well instructed. Right, and a woman, that's what them always say, a woman is either, you know, well, it's true, a woman is either programmed by society or a strong man, whether that be a father figure, which is what it would be in the ancient world to start with, then moving on to a husband. And it talks about as a father, you to give your daughter to a man of understanding. You know, you don't want to give your daughter to a man that doesn't have any understanding, can't lead her, can't guide her, can't provi um, yeah, provide provision. Provide provision. And offer protection. Why do you do that? Why do you give it to a stupid man? Okay. Nothing. Um, what was I saying? Yeah. So more time they're instructed by Eve. That's what Eve was, and that's how through her we all die. She was instructed by the serpent. Do you get me? So we'll call it there. The Lord when it was edifying. On to the next one, Lord Willing. Shalom.